Are you currently in a waiting period where you're asking God for a particular answer to a question, but he just seems silent and your prayer seems to go unanswered? Well, this video is just for you. Today, we're going to be answering the question, is God silent and what we should do when God seems silent? So stay tuned. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Liz and this is a place where I encourage you to find freedom and hope in God's truth. We are now in part two of our three part series all about waiting on God. So if you haven't watched last week's video I highly encourage you to go and do so because I give you four tips on how to make your waiting period just a little bit easier. So if you're excited about this series or you're finding this series helpful then please give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below and let's get into the video. When you're in a waiting period and you're praying to God and you just feel like your prayers are going up to the ceiling, it can be really difficult. You can start asking or questioning, why are my prayers being answered? Is it something that I've done? Is it something that I can do? Is God ignoring me? Is God really silent? But I'm here to encourage you and remind you that God isn't silent. God isn't ignoring you and your prayers are not going unanswered. The idea of God ignoring you doesn't make sense because God is a father and God wants to always build an intentional relationship with his children. The idea of a parent purposefully ignoring their child doesn't make sense, right? You see, I recently saw a tweet by Lecrae and the tweet said that how God is, a rela is relational. He isn't transactional. He wants to walk through the pain with us, not just make it disappear. And that really paints this beautiful imagery of God always, always walking every step of his life with us, always guiding us in every single step, always being there for us in every single moment. See, I like to think of the answer to my prayers in a three-way system. Either a yes, a no, or maybe. Now, just because God isn't handing out yeses the same way a business hands out samples, it doesn't mean that God is ignoring you. A lot of the time, the no's and the maybe's are the exact answers we need in order for us to get a clear picture of what God needs us to do in our current periods of our lives. God has always given us answers. He's always given us signs. He's always given us words of wisdom on what we should do with our lives. Despite God not being silent, what do we do when God seems silent? Don't worry, I've got you. I'm going to be sharing with you four tips slash reminders on what we should do. Now, the first thing is that we need to ask ourselves, am I really ready to receive the answer that God wants to give me? Is my heart open? Are my eyes and ears ready to see and hear what God needs to tell me? So often within our waiting period, we're so focused on receiving one particular answer from God that we're completely blind to the answer that he actually wants to give us. I'm guilty of this. I remember last time in my waiting period, I was so frustrated and I kept pestering God about the same question. I'm guilty of this. I remember last time in my waiting period, I was so frustrated and I kept pestering God about the same question. But I remember, as I was walking to place it one day, I took out my phone, I went onto the UCB devotional page, and the title of that page was, Allow God to Use You. Now, just the title of that page alone already hit me hard. It was as if God was saying to me, Liz, I've given you answers. I gave you answers last time, but you weren't obedient enough to go and do exactly what I asked you to do. You see, God wasn't ignoring me. I was ignoring God. So how do we avoid this? How do we avoid ignoring God? And how do we actually start to become receptive to what God needs to tell us? Well, step number two, and this is to be like Lydia. Lydia, who lives? I'm telling you. In Acts 16 verse 14, I'm going to put it on the screen and we're going to read it right now. I'm going to get my laptop out and it says this. Lydia was a merchant of expensive cloth who worshipped God. As she listened to us, the Lord opened her heart and she accepted what Paul was saying. You see, in this Bible verse, we see two things. First thing is that Lydia worshipped God 
And the second thing is that God made her receptive to what Paul wanted to tell her. If you've answered no to the question of not being receptive to what God needs to tell you, then I urge you and I encourage you to get into a place of worship. Open up your Bible, throw on some worship music, allow your mind and your and your whole body to be in a posture of where you can be open and where you can receive exactly what God wants to tell you. And whilst we're in that worship moment, pray and ask God to make you receptive. You see, Lydia couldn't be receptive or be open to what Paul needed to say to her by herself. God made her that way. And God wants to make you receptive too. You cannot do it in your own strength. You have to ask God to help you become open and be able to recognise what he needs to tell you. And whilst you're also praying, I also encourage you to ask for the strength to be obedient to whatever he tells you to do. Don't be like me. Don't ignore God, but be obedient and do exactly what he's asked you to do in that moment. Because a lot of the time when we actually focus on what God needs us to do, that's how we become satisfied. And we won't have time to focus on the dissatisfying parts of our lives. Point number three, and this is to cling tightly to God. When I was in my waiting period, despite all my frustration, all my anger, all the negative emotions, I held so tight to God. I wrote constantly in my journal because that's one of the ways I prayed to him. And I kept praying to him constantly in my mind because I wanted to receive an answer. Now, I'm not sure how clinging tightly to God looks like for you. Maybe it's journaling. Maybe it's throwing on some worship music and praising. Maybe it's having words of scripture at the forefront of your mind so that you can constantly remind yourself of the character of God and what he is doing currently. Regardless of what you're going to do, I encourage you to hold tightly to God. Keep the lines of communication open with him. You see, God isn't a forceful father. He's not going to force himself into a relationship with us. He's going to wait till we invite him into our lives. And when we do that, we allow God the opportunity to restore our brokenness, to restore our frustrations, and to also restore our anger. We don't allow the enemy to come and distract us and and to convince us that God is ignoring us or that God doesn't care about the answers in which we need. Psalms 147 verse 3 says, He heals the brokenhearted and he binds up all of their wounds. God wants to take care of you. He really wants to take care of his child and wrap wrap us in his arms of love. In order for him to do that, we have to always be authentic with who with who we are and tell him everything we're feeling, all the negativity, all the positivity, so that he knows that we want him inside of our lives. My fourth point is to not follow your own path. Don't make decisions out of a place of impatience. Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Trust that whatever God has in store for you is perfect. He knows exactly what he wants you to do, where he wants you to go and what he wants you to achieve. But you have to trust that he will reveal all these answers to you in his perfect timing. Don't rush that process. I don't try and get success by yourself because I can promise you from first experience that all that will do is dissatisfy you. I remember when I tried to chase after success and the money by myself, I was just dissatisfied. And God had to remind me that if I just waited a little bit longer, if I was just a bit more patient, then the answer he would have revealed to me would have been exactly what my heart was crying out for. God cares about, God cares about the desires of your heart. He wants you to trust that whatever he has in store for you is going to be for your good. Don't give up on God. Hang on in there. And I promise you that he has you. I pray that this video has encouraged you and you've been able to find some freedom and change your mindset about your waiting period. If this video has helped you, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below and also put in the comments which which silent season was the hardest and let's all try to encourage each other together. I love you so much. Stay tuned for next week's video where we're going to be discussing how to hear the voice of God, which is a huge topic. So let's get excited for that. I can't wait to see you next week. Take care. Have a great week. I love you so much. Bye, guys. Mm-hmm.